we did the concept of the galvanometer and found that the operating torque on the galvanometer was n a b i right and and the resisting torque was k theta okay the theta is the angle by which the pointer moves from its neutral position and and thus i can be represented as as or or or, or, or. or. theta can be represented as n a b upon k i and we saw that this is the direct this is this is a constant so 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 we get this and and, and theta is a direct reflection of i higher the i higher is the theta and we just have to pass a current and then then keep on marking it we, we pass a current see where the say say if it is it is say say 1 milliampere of a current then let us say my pointer is somewhere here then i just have to do that marking okay. so we have taken the galvanometer the constant as k by n Theta is G i. This is the galvanometer constant. This. Because we are concerned with the deflection with respect to i, right? So, so G is N A B upon k n a b upon k is the galvanometer constant right now a galvanometer as we saw has got a very high resistance so so it cannot be used to to measure currents as an ammeter, right? So, so a galvanometer can be used to measure current like an ammeter like an ammeter right now what is the reason the first reason is the first reason is that that a galvanometer is a very sensitive instrument and gives a full scale deflection for a very small amount of current so a galvanometer actually a, a, a galvanometer gives a full deflection current gives a full scale deflection okay full scale deflection for a very small current for a very small current 
of the order of a few microamperes okay of the order of a few microamperes and and hence hence is absolutely useless if you want to measure say any higher current right so 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 hence can be used to measure higher current okay next the next thing about the galvanometer is that that since its resistance is very high since its resistance is high and for measuring current an instrument has to be connected in series right and and for measuring current an instrument has to be connected in series we cannot expect a high resistance to come in series because then it will alter say say i have say i have a circuit like this okay let's say something like this with with 10 ohms here right and and i wish to measure the current here let's say this is some value v and i wish to measure the current here and and i and i put a galvanometer which comes with its own resistance of say 50 ohms right now what happens or or, or let let us be specific what what this value is so so let us this let this let this value be be 10 volts right and and if i do this okay then then if this galvanometer was not there okay so if if earlier it was a short what is the expected current in the circuit okay so so this galvanometer is, is currently not there let, let us let us erase it okay let us erase it so this is not there at all okay okay then then what is what is the current that should be flowing in this circuit it it will be 10 upon 10 that will be that will be i will be v upon r that will be 1 amperes right now suppose i i put in a galvanometer a galvanometer with a resistance 50 ohms right or 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 say 40 ohms okay say say let us say this galvanometer resistance is 40 ohms so what is the total resistance it is it is 50 ohms and i will be 10 upon 50 that is 0.2 amperes okay so this is a false reading false reading in the sense this is not the current that was supposedly flowing in the circuit prior to the prior to the uh, to the putting of the galvanometer in the circuit right now i have put in a device to measure the current faithfully what this device device did was it introduced such a high resistance in series that it actually measured the current as one fifth of what it actually is so this is a false reading i do not want this reading what cost this measurement is okay so 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 it is it is this reason why you do not put a galvanometer radically as a measuring device in a for 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 measuring the current right so the uh, <clears throat> current series the, the galvanometer alters the 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 galvanometer alters the galvanometer alters the the total resistance of the circuit
and gives an erroneous reading and gives an erroneous reading right so this is how it goes fine so so what happens that's why galvanometers are used primarily as detectors just to tell whether there is a current and and there it has an advantage because it is an extremely sensitive instrument okay so so therefore galvanometers are used as detectors as in as in wheatstone bridges right so as in wheatstone example Detectors, example, in wheatstone bridges that we saw in chapter three, right? Okay. Okay, and they're pretty efficient as detectors okay because they are extremely sensitive instruments right so very efficient detectors as they are very sensitive instruments right Fine. Okay. Now the question comes Can these galvanometers be converted into ammeters or voltmeters? The answer is yes. And that's what we'll do in the next video.